data during your DevOps journey, and it will be one of the cornerstone of your of this cultural change, as DevOps is a cultural change. Um, so we see that uh, data is not just something that you collect and look once in a while. You should, you know, monitor and rely on them to give more impact when providing DevOps and when taking decisions. So uh, here is a little bit about myself. So I'm Yan Chasing, solution engineer at JFrog. Um, so the goal of the solution engineering team is to help our customers to be successful in their uh, digital transformation by, by giving them advices or best practices on DevOps. And we also uh, guiding them on how to use uh, the JFrog products in the most efficient way according to their context. Uh, we also do webinars like this one, uh, write blogs and white papers, and attend conferences. So you uh, might have seen, it, uh, seen us at uh, recently at DevOps Belgium or DockerCon. So let's begin uh, this journey. And actually, I will illustrate this webinar with my first and own DevOps experience. Um, so it wasn't a big success, but big success, but you know, I learned a lot from it. And I would like to share it actually with you. Uh, so you know, it was actually a few years ago, and this team, this integration team, which, uh, which was doing uh, the link between the dev and the ops side. So we were, managed, we were taking releases, installing them on the different uh, environment, testing them, and made sure that we, the procedure to go to production was uh, correct. For the, for the ops guys. Uh, and we also were managing different tools, and among them, the CI tools, so like Jenkins and Sorafu. All right, so you know, so one morning after reading some papers, uh, my boss had this great idea about leveraging or deliver processes. And you know, so this morning, he came to my office, to my desk, and told me this. So I had this great idea, we should do DevOps. So in my mind, you know, I was kind of surprised, happy, and also confused because at that time, um, you know, DevOps was a concept and there were different meanings. And one of them, for instance, was to, um, you know, let the dev guy running everything from the code to the installation or to the deployment to production. And then the ops guy just managing uh, the monitoring part. And the other, actually, the other meaning that well, uh, I, I had in mind was to really break this wall between the dev and the ops world. So try to make you know, these two worlds uh, working together to reach the same goal. So basically that was more uh, mindset to initiate in the both world. So I didn't really know what uh, my boss wanted to, uh, which goal he wanted to achieve, but I knew that um, he wanted to do DevOps for this purpose, you know, to, uh, to be able to reduce time to market. So at that time, we were doing a Scrum and XP, so agile methodology, with, our, uh, with all of our DevOps team. And we saw that it was working really well. We could, we could, we could see that, you know, they were, more, they were happier and um, the, the development process were going really fast and it was better. And actually, my boss wanted to uh, extend this experience, this uh, agile experience, and to the actually extend it to the uh, ops world. I would say. So he wanted to improve what he could uh, on different uh, step part, like the deployment, operational, and monitoring uh, part. And the idea would be, you know, uh, to be able to deliver faster to production with a better quality. So you know, I was pretty um, excited about this project, but and um, I just really, really wanted to know how we were go we were going to implement this. So I was going to be part of this, uh, you know, new, this new team. So we were transforming to a DevOps team to uh, really initiate this uh, new mindset. And I knew that actually this was the most um, difficult or the, the 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 biggest challenge was to really uh, inculcate this cultural change. And actually, for my boss, you know, it wasn't that, um, you know, difficult. 
And actually, he came, you know, with his own uh, master plan, I would say. So for him, everything was clear. We are going to go with these rules. So these were actually uh, his guidelines. Um, so first one, actually, so the, this development journey was also a project to, you know, update, update our stack of tools, technologies. He wanted to get rid of all this legacy and all, all these uh, homemade tools or script used um, by, you know, new, by a new and more sexy stack of technologies. For instance, he wanted to, you know, to, uh, to replace all JBoss by Tomcat because it was simpler to use, and et cetera. He also wanted to simplify all processes, then specifically the deployment processes. So it was uh, how we were going to you know, install or upgrade or, or web app or how to provision our service. So he really wanted to have this simple you know, channel, the same one that we would use to, uh, for deployment, as we had different technologies and it was he wanted to have this common pipeline and to use the same stack of tools on the different environment. And the uh, last thing, I mean, he wanted to get rid of all the manual steps. He, for him, I mean, these steps were uh, uh, useless and he, he wanted to replace them by automation. And actually his main point was to really focus on this part, on the, automate, on the automation part. And on my mind, I mean, I, you know, uh, at that time I agreed. I was okay with uh, doing all this stuff, but something was really missing. It was this communication part. How we will be, uh, how to initiate this process, how we'll be, uh, we will be teaching or initializing this new mindset, the DevOps mindset. And for him at that time, it was, you know, it, was, it wasn't an issue actually, because he, uh, he knew that you know what he was doing, it was the right part. So, so showing them really, uh, putting them on the right path uh, with the, the right tools, these new tools, uh, they would be excited and they would everybody would come on board. Everything will be running as he planned. Well, actually, that wasn't exactly the case. Anyway, so I say, okay. Well, in my mind, I just kept this um, in my mind and. And we tried to actually, I wanted to, you know, uh, time to times I went back to him and say that, I mean, this, you know, this uh, difference, this difference of mindset was an issue. So, okay. So basically this was his master plan and we implemented this master plan. So this is what we, uh, uh, so we did. So the different part, you know, uh, actually we, we, we worked on different, uh, step, I would say, of our uh, delivery process. And the idea was really to, you know, we were the, the DevOps team, so we were in charge of picking the, the right tools, testing them, and coming with uh, some kind of out-of-the-box solution. So we were gonna, without really, you know, uh, listening to their real pain points. That's another mistake we did. So the, the idea would be, we would come with, you know, all tools, install them, uh, and train the different teams. And then, yeah, so, and then the handover would be like this. So what we did we, uh, in a few months, we implemented, we installed and implemented different solution. For the deployment part, we wanted to get rid of our homemade uh, de deployment tool. So we installed, uh, we, want, we used Ansible. And at first we also wanted to, um, to use it with Docker. But after some point we saw that, you know, um, for now, we would just stick to Ansible, and then Docker would come later. We also, you know, added new tools. I would say uh, for the operational part, the idea was with Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins would be um, dry, uh, would drive uh, would drive the um, the Ansible uh, script, so it would run the, on the Ansible uh, playbook, and we would use actually, you know, um, the same stack on the non-production environment as well to have the same stack of tools on the whole delivery chain. So we would use Jenkins and Cibor on integration, UAT, pre-production, and production. We also um, uh, gave an access to the production manager to Jira in that way that they could have a look on what was going on on the dev side. Uh, so they could see uh, the next 
plans released, what they would contain, uh, the different bugs which, uh, which were fixed. Um, and we also, I mean, for, for the sake of new project, we installed unit task caps. And then you also wanted to, um, you know, uh, on the monitoring part, so we had at that time a different monitoring tool like Nature also Central. Uh, and so it wasn't a request from neither the dev nor the ops, but it was a, a specific demand from my boss to install this uh, stack, this ERC stack, so Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, to be able to fetch some feedback from our application logs. And so this is what we did. So we, you know, we uh, we installed all the different tools in ready in like uh, less than five months. Four months. So it was kind of you know uh, challenging to do this. Uh, I was qu quite happy also to work on these new different tools and trying the other uh, ops team. And at the end, after you know uh, several months, so we had um, the outcome of this. Uh, so this were the, the feedback. So we had say uh, positive feedback. So the idea, you know, people were really uh, happy to see disappearing all all legacy tools, and instead seeing new and fancy uh, tools like Ansible, um, and at that time it was the uh, ELK, the Elk stack. Uh, the production manager were really also uh, happy to have access to our Jira, to uh, to really have more visibility on the daily process, so they were aware of. The next releases, where they were planned, on which step of the uh, of the daily process they were in before, you know, coming to production. And actually, we saw also that we we saw more interaction between the dev and the, and the ops, uh, especially actually, you know, the production manager and certain some ops actually um, were invited to um, to uh, to enjoy a tour, like uh, when we're, they were doing when they were doing a kickoff or a demo or retrospective, they, they were inviting um, ops guys. So on that part, you know, it was a good feedback. Uh, and we had uh, something, on the other hand, we had some kind of, not I wouldn't, wouldn't say really a negative feedback, but something which was a bit wrong. So, so we saw that um, not all the, the tools that we installed, we installed at that time, were mastered, if, even after training them, you know, after training the different teams. And they were uh, even less, I mean, they were not used at all, especially the, uh, the, ELK, the ELK stack. So I think on this point, we, what we missed is really the, the way how we introduced to the different, these different teams. We saw also that, you know, we were uh, teams of, Three or four people at that time, uh, we couldn't we couldn't onboard all the different teams, and some of them I think got the feeling that they were left aside. And with the team that we were we, uh, which were involved in that process, we saw less and less involvement actually, and some kind of lack of motivation. So maybe it was part of you know of not mastering uh, the different tools, or maybe it was because we came to them with uh, with a solution without really you know talking to them and listening to their pain points. And so yeah, so this was the, the first impression I would say about the uh, my, my DevOps experience. And now when I, when I look at it, you know this is actually what is DevOps and what we should have done. So for recap, so DevOps uh, um, is a cultural change. The idea really is, it's, uh, uh, I'm saying this since the beginning, but uh, the biggest change is really to change this, or to initiate this cultural change, to, have, to, uh, to inspire this, uh, I would say, a old spirit. So it would be trust, indulgence, and be able to build, some, to build something together with different teams, and in a simple manner, I would say. Try to, 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 uh, to stick to simple. And they would be ready to have all these different teams working all together. And to do this, I mean, they need to really uh, understand each other, and especially their own, I mean, the other team's pain points and their motivation. So this is the first uh, aspect. And one of the other uh, things that we missed is not only to know to come 
like this and show them what they should do and do it that's right matter but what you have to do well, which, which we should have done is really on each of these teams pick up um, you know a, a team member who would be um, able to inculcate this value and then it will then motivate so this champion will motivate the all he uh, all his team and try to you know to uh, to to work to have a to work better and better by improving uh, what's uh, what's wrong. I would say. You also have you know when you when to initiate this cultural change, this has to be uh, done by share and transparency. Again, the idea is to really improve the communication between the different teams. So it could be you know between dev and ops team, but also between the different ops team. Because in, in the ops, uh, I put in, you know, um, when I say ops, it's about you know, the, the production team, the one, the people who are actually uh, installing or creating the different application, could be also the network team, the C7 teams. So this has to be really improved. And the idea is really to, make, to break these different silos and make them understand each other. So how the, the idea is really to, show um, to each of these teams um, different aspect of what the other team are doing. So for instance, if you um, in, we are in each of these teams, we, uh, they are all using the you know, internal dashboards to, um, to show what was going on um, during the last week and where they wanted to, the goal that they wanted to, to, um, to achieve. So this kind of dashboard should, should be publicly available and not only dedicated to a specific team. This is the first step, actually, to break uh, this wall, to break this side. And it's also a way, you know, to uh, showing this dashboard to really motivate your team and give pride on on this. Saying that, for instance, having uh, an uptime of your server of uh, I don't know hundreds of hours, you know, it's a good metrics or indicator for the the other team, especially for a dev team. Then you know when you. When you've done this, yes, you have the automation part, and that's the one we focus too much on, I would say, and you know, it didn't really work. Focusing DevOps is not automation. Sorry to, to tell you this, but it's more about this cultural change. But you know, having this automation part would the you would see, you would see that like sparing a resource from doing a dull task, like copying files, executing a single script, sending logs for people. It is the aim of the automation is to really use that resource and set him uh, or her, you know, to a task with more added values. And that's the really the aim of automation. But for us, I mean, it's really to um, to take uh, to 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 prevent, I would say, or to prevent uh, human errors. And we shouldn't be put that in that way, but more in the fact that in the way that you know a resource should be. A human being should be doing something more interesting than copying files, for instance. And then, uh, last but not the least, I would say you have when you are doing DevOps, so it's a new mindset, and it comes with a new methodology, a new way of thinking, and this that would be you know this continuous improvement. And when you do this, uh, so it's a new methodology, so you can. You don't have to do. Uh, I mean, it was also uh, a bit difficult to you know to do to do Scrum and using Kanban for or, or during uh, with your ops teams, your different ops teams. But you can start small again and take what you really want to have. Like for instance, you can uh, start um, you know the the dimming wheel or the uh, PDCA, so the plan, do, check, check and act to do this. So this is what we should have done actually before, you know, focusing on the on the different on the automation. So we should have first contacted or get in touch with the different teams, talked about what we wanted to achieve, without talking about you know automation, and then try to really understand their pain points and try to federate people around this uh, new mindset. And for the so you have to set this mindset and also a new methodology, like, like I was saying. So you can just start with a simple, you know, dimming wheel with this. 
and you really have to um, to respect all the different steps. So plan, do, control, or check, and act. And especially, I would say, you know, for instance, the control or check phase would represent in a uh, Scrum method the retrospective. You can only you can start with this one as well uh, at the beginning, the retrospective. When you do something, you have to have this uh, check phase. So it can take could be you know a meeting during a meeting you can use uh, this uh, phase this control phase to get all the feedback of what you were doing before. So this feedback will actually help you to see if everybody everybody on your team is on the same phase on the same level uh, if they do understand what they are doing and why and maybe you are doing something wrong and then I mean you would do uh, you would you know take what they, 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 they told you and take decision on this. I've got an instance, you know, for instance, I had this, um, I'm gonna give you an example, an example that you know, I had during this uh, experience. So we wanted to, um, to provision our servers use, using our CMDB. So you know, it was a database with a list of the different um, servers and different tools to put through install. And we wanted to automate this because we know that actually, uh, you know, we were spending some time on this and we wanted to reduce this time. So some people actually um, were against this. And actually it was the, uh, the directors, the managers, as it was too complex to plug operating system uh, to the CMDB and then fetch the different elements and, you know, translate them to a dependent scripts. And we know that, you know, for, uh, for, for, for the integration team, it was a pain point because, you know, they had to fill out two forms, send them to different teams, and wait for the servers to come, and then they would install the different tool. So what we, so we talked, actually, so we did the first step, I would say, to say, okay, we are going to find a solution for this. Um, and the idea, and the, at the end, I mean, so there you go. All the details, but we come to a solution without automation, but uh, we we uh, which managed to reduce this time. So we at the end we had only uh, one form, a simplified form, and only one of the one team was dealing with provisioning the server. So it was faster, and we just stop at the, at this step. Um, but actually, if we wanted to really automate uh, to go further, we should have done this control phase to say, okay, so now we got. Uh, we've done this, how can we do better? And to do better, you've got to uh, rely on metrics, all data. Um, so like the different data that would be used are, for instance, to compare how many days does it take to provision a server, how many requests per week do you have, and by using these metrics, you'll be able to see already uh, if, you know, automating uh, a new system would be uh, useful. And then you could have just done this, use that deeming well, step by step. But we didn't do it. So that's why you know feedback. So this check phase or control phase is really uh, is essential. So that's why you, you need to get feedbacks from your, uh, your different teams. So you can get you know, different kind of feedback, quantitative feedback and qualitative feedback. So the idea with the uh, quantitative feedback is to be able to get metrics or data that, that you'll be able to compare and measure over time. So these metrics uh, will allow, will uh, help you to measure the accomplished work during you know, this life cycle, during this cycle, and then to drive your next action based on these metrics. It will also be used as support material during your, your meetings to make people talk about uh, what's been, that what they were doing, and in an efficient way. Then you know, and you you know what you were actually doing. I'm pretty sure that you're already doing this kind of uh, system with your monitoring system in production. So maybe you know you've been using uh, these APM tools like uh, App Dynamics, uh, Dynatrace, or Neuralink. Or even though uh, maybe you're, you, you're using an infrastructure, you know, an infrastructure monitoring tool like Nagios, uh, Prometheus, Senzu, for instance. And the idea is really to you know to collect metrics and to use them to take, to take decisions. So the, the idea would be really to 
to do the same with the same what you are doing with your monitoring system, you should apply it to um, your your delivery process because of, because you need facts and you need figures and numbers to take the decision. And then you'll be also be able to use them to measure what you've done and if you've done it in the right or the wrong way. So you have to pick up, you know, um, metrics to actually eva the, to evaluate your your process or your pain points. So, so th these metrics could be uh, like SLA metrics, system, or functional metrics. So, for instance, if you take an SLA metrics, you can use you know applications or servers of time. So you as a simple, you know, it's really something you may think it's really simple, but with this, you'll be able to really measure the stability of your application. And maybe you can, you know, um, with this indicator, you can see that if you've added, let's say, performance test, like you, you've been test using performance test, it will have an impact on these uh, metrics and this indicator. So if you mix the, the number of performance tests with this, you can, you know, rely, um, connect the use of the number of performance tests with your application or server. Or specific, specifically application. You can also use, you know, the uh, recovery and response times to see if, you know, uh, you've been implementing your, your, your application with microservices, so it will, it will reduce complexity. And you will see that uh, it may affect these uh, recovery and response times. As you know, maybe by, by uh, using microservices, different modules, you'll be able to uh, to restart the simple service with uh, very fast without having to restart the whole application. That could be, you know, simple metrics to measure what you've done during your your, your dev uh, during your dev phase. You can also have, you know, system uh, as a quantitative feedback, a system metrics. So it could be a traditional one, you know, common, most common one, CPU, RAM, and heap consumption. Uh, you can have, you know, the number of errors or warning. So the goal would be to have zero of them, or you know have um, metrics about the storage consumption, and this, for instance, can be a good start to uh, to have a, um, a meeting or communication with dev or ops. So who should do uh, this uh, system uh, file system purge or database purge? You also have you know functional metrics. Um, for instance, so these are you can use this one. For instance, the ratio between uh, the number of races going to production and release candidates. Uh, so you can have a, a really a, a good estimation of if your tests are working uh, are really relevant. But if you, for instance, mix if you take you know this ratio of number of releases going to production and, for instance, the number of incidents, it can tell you that you know maybe you have um, you need to, uh, to implement more. Uh, more test on a specific problem, and you will get, you know, you will you will know which uh, test to implement according to the type of error that you would uh, see in the different log files, and that who you would have fetched with a monitoring system. You can also, you know, have a uh, use number of promotion to evaluate actually your quality gates. So, promotion in the term that if you're using Artifactory, you may have heard of this system, which actually. Um, uh, rely on you know creating a pipeline of different repositories, and each of these repositories would represent the maturity of your product. And you would see then that you would have between this uh, repository a quality gate, a set of tests that you would run before using a promotion. So by moving or copying an, artif uh, an artifact in a specific uh, repository, like a dev repository, to pass to the integration repository. And you can also, uh, well, the last, you can also use you know, the, your build duration. You know, the build duration may be a good, uh, in, a good metric to see if um, a boost of, of your infrastructure, like you know, adding more RAM or more CPU to one of the, of the, the VM hosting your, for instance, your Jenkins agents, or adding a new slave will have an impact on this build duration. And so you would be able to uh, release faster. Or maybe you know it's a good start to say, oh, okay, so my build duration is all, uh, around 20 or 30 minutes. Maybe by implementing a microservice, 
receives and to speed up my application into several pieces and to several jobs will uh, help to reduce this build duration. So get more, you, you know, you can have more and more uh, uh, metric, but these are simple examples that could, you can use. You know, it's not something which are too complicated to come with, to come out with. So then, so I was talking about this uh, quantitative uh, feedback. You can, you should also, you know, um, uh, collect qualitative feedback. So that would be, you know, the the general feeling, uh, the opinion of your team members. It because it will uh, always you can also you know, collect this kind of uh, feedback using so forms meetings you can use the roti as well and to also uh, evaluate or assess and say uh, a team member's satisfaction on the on what on what they are doing so it will provide also insight about specific issues or problems that you would have internally or with different teams and help you know to develop new ideas or maybe you know you could be able to talk about new uh, quantitative feedback so i was talking about you know qualitative quantitative feedback but the question would be uh, so how would you collect this data during your your process your delivery process so we come to to this so you know um let's say that you're your dev manager and you have to deal with different teams to get some feedback some metrics we would have, for instance, the race team would use you know, the Jenkins, production, production manager main tool would be Jira. The developer would be, you know, uh, pushing their code to Bitbucket. The QA team would be building dashboard uh, uh, on Sonar Cube to have, you know, these, uh, all these tests. And the ops, let's say they have, they are using Kubernetes. So you will see that it's gonna, gonna be, and then you know that, you know, it's, bringing, it's gonna be really difficult to really get all these, these different metrics to you and you know use them uh, in an efficient way so really so you got different ways to to uh, to get them to get all these metrics from these different teams and different tools the first one would be uh, what you can do is implement and do a weekly report so what you would do is to have an account on, on each of these tools build your own dashboard and then make a cross analysis on what the, uh, what uh, if maybe you know having a Jira making a link a relationship between different um, key metrics. But the um, the issues with this or the, the the problem would be first it's going to be time consuming. So you would be you will have you know to have a clear visibility on your pipeline and your delivery process to go to go over all these different dashboards. So it's going to be really time consuming. Uh, on top of that, I mean, you will have to deal with different uh, data, data. You have more and more data in your dashboard. So you are going to have, you know, this kind of overload of data. And, um, and third thing is to, as you'll be doing this weekly, for instance, per application, you'll be, I mean, you will miss critical information as you will do it weekly, so once a week. Um, and, and you won't be up to date until, you know, uh, you reach all the different, uh, dashboard and understand what uh, what's going on so ideally what you want is to have a real-time um, system to make corrective decision right away so ready to be up to date i would say there is another method that people actually are using i was doing it uh, you know in my previous experience uh, is to have anecdotal information so the idea is some kind of we say socializing uh, process is to go over to the different people and talk to them and try to get uh, the most of them. So to get information bits by bits. Um, so that's the, the, the main idea. Um, the issue, well, the main problem of this is that what you are going to have is mainly uh, so qualitative uh, feedback. So some kind of a feeling or a point of view, which doesn't really you know, reflect the reality. For instance, if you ask a developer how things were doing, you would say that we well, you know it's fine uh, there is no issue we are progressing but it won't tell you maybe that you know they had uh, a, production, a production incident uh, two uh, two days ago and it took them like uh, four hours to fix this bug so you know you won't get all the different details 
And so actually what you can do is mix, you know, have a mix of this uh, alien colony information and dashboard. And that's in general what, what uh, managers do. But again, it's not really the, the right solution. So at JFrog, we were, uh, we were concerned, we, we knew this issue and we were concerned about this. And that's why we were working on, you know, the right or the ideal solution to help you monitor and analyze your delivery pipeline. And that would be this uh, solution. So for, for now, we, we, we will call it JFrog Insight. And the idea is really to uh, have, you know, on the same tool, uh, to get metric on the same tool, on the same UI, you will be able to gather or to aggregate all the different metric that, the, that would come from different tools. And in that way, I mean, it's going to be really more, it's going to be easier to, um, to perform this, you know, cross, um, this cross analysis. So it's going to be really faster and predictive, more logical to, um, to understand all the different metrics on different tools. Uh, so it's going to be in real time, as you know, this tool will be connected to the other tools. Um, it's going to be concise because you'll have, you know, you have the right uh, data, the right uh, numbers, the right metrics, and it's going to be less time consuming as, you know, you won't need to log on the different product, but have everything on the same UI. So this is actually what I wanted to share with you guys and that, you know, so JFrog Insight is still in the pipeline. We're still building this solution. For now, there is no ETA. But yeah, I just wanted to let you know that we are working on this. We, we are aware of this pain point and we're trying to figure this out and to fix. So this is the end of my presentation. Um, maybe you've got some, some questions for me. Um, Okay, so we have a um, couple of questions. Uh, so, what are the you know the um, the planned uh, integration? Okay, if I go back to here, so here actually you know it's uh, it's just example. You know, uh, so JFrog Insight actually is a product that we're work on we're working on right now, and uh, in. Actually, we, uh, you know, uh, we JFrog acquired CloudMunch uh, this uh, this year in June, and this they had this um, product, their product, so uh, CloudMunch Insight, and basically this is what the the product their platform was doing is to aggregate um, data into one uh, interface, one UI, and we are trying now, you know, to use the same concept, but and integrating it into uh, all JFrog product. So basically, we, you should have these integrations. So with Jira, Jenkins, Bitbucket, Solar Queue, but I can't really list you all the integration, but basically we should get this uh, during the final product. Um, yeah. Uh, second question. Um, okay, so which uh, key metric do you recommend to monitor? Um, so I show you the different you know, metrics. Uh, the idea is really to, um, when you are using metrics, if you want, it's to really, there will be your support material, you know, during your discussion with, the, uh, with your boss or the other teams. So you should pick them really accordingly, accordingly to your use case. The idea is really to be able to, uh, to evaluate and to assess uh, the work done and to take this decision based on these key metrics. So I can't really give you the key ones. You can take the one that I showed you. The I would say the the other idea it would be to really don't fresh um, and start by collecting metrics and to you know, the first step would be to define your key metrics of what you want to uh, really assess be, before really fixing or improving something get the key metric that you want to get so maybe it would you know, it require to have a tool or a script to collect some these metrics so that may be a, a prerequisite. Uh, okay, I got the, another one. Well, questions, not really of my results. So, will it be part? So, if is therefore inside will be part of the enterprise pack? Um, again, uh, so it's still in the pipeline. Uh, I don't really know the license model for this. It hasn't been communi communicated yet, uh, and our clear or licensing model will change uh, next year. Um, 
But I think, uh, unfortunately, uh, in my opinion, this tool won't be able, you know, integrated with the, the pro license. Okay, so that's the end of the question. And I think I would be, so thanks for coming and have a good day. Thank you everyone for your time and interest and we will send you an email with a recording of this session and if you have any questions um, please feel free to reach out to us or to access our documentation on our JFROG pages. Thank you very much and have a great remaining afternoon. Thanks, bye-bye.